Hi everybody! In today's lecture I'm going to talk to you about gyroscopes, okay? And so gyroscopes and tops um, are basically children's toys a lot of times. Um, gyroscopes have useful uh, applications of course as well, but um, let's just talk about the toy part today, huh? So what you've got when you spin a top, um, you give it an angular velocity about its symmetry axis. I'm going to call the symmetry axis of the top the axle here today. Um, and so here the axle would be this little handle that sticks up from the top of the top of the top. <laughs> now if it's a good top, uh, then it'll be a nice symmetric object about this symmetry axis, okay? Now when you spin the top and you watch its motion in front of you on the table or the floor, then what you'll see is that in addition to the rotation of the object about its axle, you can also see that the um, axle itself will rotate, okay? So this rotation of your axle is known as precession. So what this means is that the axle itself is tracing out a circle around a vertical axis, and that's sketched here with a little dashed uh, line there, okay? Now, the cause of the precession is the torque due to gravity, okay? Um, and we're gonna talk about why that um, happens in great mathematical depth here. But conceptually, um, if you didn't spin the top and you just placed the top on the table on its little point, right? What would happen is the top would just flop right over, okay? And this is because um, the point of contact with the top and the table itself becomes an axis of rotation. And the force that's causing it to flop over, that's causing the torque, is the force due to gravity on the object. Now, it's really hard to balance a top perfectly so that the um, uh, force due to gravity is straight down right above the, um, the point of the top. It's really hard to do that. And so if you try to put the top down for most tops, it'll just have a little bit of imbalance and it'll flop over. And that's because there's a, um, a, a lever arm here that points from the, uh, the base where the tip of the top touches the table to the center of mass of the top. Now the center of mass is the point at which you can consider the force of gravity for the object acting, okay? And so you have that R vector pointing from the tip to the center of mass and then Mg pointing down. And then that causes an R cross Mg torque on the system which causes the top to just rotate over with respect to its tip on the table. Okay, and that's why the top flops over. Now that torque still exists if the top is spinning, but if the top is spinning, then what can happen is that torque that's provided by gravity can go into changing the angular momentum vector that's created by spinning the top about its own axis. Okay, so there's an angular momentum, L is equal to I omega, for example, as discussed in previous lectures, that's caused when I spin the top about its axle, I here is the moment of inertia of my top, and omega is the angular um, speed of my top, so L is equal to I omega. That angular momentum here in this um, drawing for this top, with omega, um, the rotation being counterclockwise, that angular momentum is pointing up along the axle, okay, up and to the right here in this, in this sketch. And then what will happen is that torque um, will cause that angular momentum vector to change its direction. So remember that torque is equal to dl dt, and so it can make the angular momentum vector change in time. And so it goes into doing that rather than making the top flop over. And then, of course, what will happen is as the top slows down, um, the uh, speed of the precession will change until eventually the angular momentum just isn't large enough anymore and the top will flop over on you. All right, so let's talk mathematically about why this happens, okay? And here I apologize. It's my sketches. Um, from here on out, which are, you know, not as lovely, but okay, let's take a snapshot of what happens with our little top um, in time. And so here my top is this little ball and it's got uh, kind of a skinny rod that points um, down through the center of it. Okay, so that's my little top because I can't draw. Okay, so here I'm doing a free body diagram of my top um, and Mg is acting down on the center of mass, which is just kind of in the center of my little ball there. The other force that I have is, of course, the normal force, but it acts at the point of contact between the tip top and the table. So the position vector that points 
from the, um, or the lever arm, I guess, that points from the point of contact with the table to the center of mass of the object. That's my R cross MG there, torque. And if I do my right hand rule, R cross MG, my torque is into the screen here. And I've indicated that with the cross and the circle around it for the direction of the torque into the screen. And of course, torque here is tau, okay? So that's how that goes. Now the angular momentum vector, if the top is spinning counterclockwise as you look down on it, the way that you figure out which way the angular momentum vector is, is spinning is you take your fingers and you curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of the spin, of the rotation. If it's counterclockwise, then I would look down on my hand and make sure that my fingers were curling counterclockwise as I rotated my hand. And then the thumb of my right hand points in the direction of my angular momentum. So that's how I can figure out which way the angular momentum vector points for this top that's spinning counterclockwise. Okay. Now, over time, what happens is the um, axle of my top is going to do this. It's going to spin and process in this way, and that'll trace out kind of a cone shape with my um, axle of my top, as is shown here. Okay. Um, so we're going to ignore any slowing of the top here um, and assume that it's a nice, beautiful, non-dissipative um, uh, spin and that omega doesn't change with time. If omega doesn't change with time, then that means my angular momentum vector magnitude is also going to be the same in time. Okay, so the magnitude of my angular momentum vector doesn't change. Um, so in that case, then I have this beautiful cone that um, is traced out, making a nice circle in my um, horizontal plane as I look down on it. Okay? So if I look down at this projection, if I call y my vertical axis, my up-down axis, and then x and z be the axes in my horizontal plane, and then I plot what the angular momentum vector looks like um, projected down into that x z plane, then what I can see is with the precession, what will happen is this angular momentum vector will just rotate like so through, um, through the angle. Now, if the angular speed of precession, if I call that big omega, then you can see that omega t is going to be the angle at any given time that the projection of the angular momentum vector makes in the xz plane, okay, as is shown here. So this line here is supposed to represent the angular momentum vector projection in the xz plane, and then omega t would be the angle of that in the xz plane, okay? Okay, now... Let's solve for some uh, equations here. We want to solve for what the angular speed of the uh, precession is. So let's solve for omega. So to do that, um, let's first write down our equations for torque. So the torque due to gravity is going to be, of course, all torque is R cross F, um, where R is the um, vector that points from the axis of rotation to the point of application of the force, and then F is the force itself. So here as gravity, it would be R cross MG, okay? And R points from where the top touches the table to the center of mass, and then MG points down, okay? Now the magnitude of the torque would be R MG, and then times the sine of the angle in between R and MG. Now here, if you look, let's say that our angle um, of our axle, the angle our axle makes with the vertical is, we'll call it theta, okay? So if that angle is angle theta, then the angle in between R and MG here, with MG pointing straight down, would be pi minus theta, okay, where pi is 180 degrees, and uh, pi in radians and 180 degrees and degrees, okay? So that's pi minus theta. Now, um, that would mean that our torque magnitude would be RMG times the sine of pi minus theta. But, of course, the sine of pi minus theta is the same as the sine of theta. So that means that the magnitude of our torque is RMG sine of theta, all right? Okay, so that gives us one equation for torque. Now let's write another in terms of the time derivative of our angular momentum vector. Then we can equate those two and solve. So let's look at our angular momentum vector. Um, if I look at a time snapshot of uh, t is equal to zero, okay, and we plot the vertical axis versus the x-axis, and we assume that at time t is equal to zero that the angular momentum vector is in the xy plane and there's no z component. Okay, then in that case, I have it drawn like this. So here I have x, y, and L is making an angle theta with the vertical. Then I could say that the angular momentum vector L is equal to L sine theta i hat plus L cosine theta j hat, okay, using my trig. Now L here is the magnitude of the angular momentum, and theta is the angle with the vertical. 
All right, now what will happen is as time goes on, my angular momentum vector will sweep out that cone, so it'll rotate, okay? We're going to assume that the angle theta that it makes with the vertical doesn't change and the magnitude doesn't change, okay? So that the only thing that changes is its projection in that xz plane. So now let's look at the xz plane. Realize that the length of the vector in the xz plane, if L and theta don't change, it's always going to be the same length. So the projection in the horizontal plane of our angular momentum vector is L sine theta. Now, the x and z components of that projection, however, will change with time as the object processes and rotates. And so, if you look here, the angle that it makes with the x-axis at some given point in time will be omega times t, the angular speed of precession times the time, okay? So then, if at a later time I were to write the components of the angular momentum vector, now it's got a z component, okay? So, that angular momentum vector could be written as L is equal to L sine theta cosine of omega t i hat plus L cosine theta j hat plus L sine theta sine omega t k hat, okay? You might need to pause the video and stare at that a minute before it makes sense, but I think if you think about it hard enough, it will. Okay, now the torque is the time derivative of the angular momentum. So if we say that torque is equal to dl dt, and then we take the time derivative of that expression for L from the previous slide, then I'd have d dt of L sine theta cosine omega t i hat plus L cosine theta j hat plus L sine theta sine omega t k hat. Realize that theta doesn't change and L doesn't change. So those things are constants, okay? So if we take the time derivative of this, then what we end up with is minus omega L sine of theta sine omega t i hat plus zero j hat, because there's no time dependence in the uh, y component, plus omega l sine of theta cosine omega t k hat, okay? So, if I want to find the magnitude of that torque, I take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. When I do that, I get the square root of omega squared l squared sine squared theta times, um, oops, that's supposed to be, that's a typo there, control C, Control V, make that a sign. Sorry. That's omega square root of omega squared L squared sine squared theta times sine squared omega t plus cosine squared omega t. Now, sine squared plus cosine squared is always 1. And so that means that under the square root, I just have the square root of omega squared L squared sine squared theta, which is omega L sine of theta. Okay? Now, that gives us another expression for torque. We can set that equal to the torque that we already found, which was Rmg sine of theta. In setting these things equal, we can see sine of theta cancel, leaving us with an expression for the angular speed of precession, omega, is equal to Rmg over L, which is equal to, if you write L is equal to I lowercase omega, Rmg over I little omega. All right? Remember that little omega is the speed of the um, angular speed of the object spinning about its own axis whereas big omega is the angular speed of precession. Okay, so that's how you find the angular speed of precession for a top or a gyroscope. Um, I hope that made sense to you and you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in class.